Tonight exclusive, the moment a house is set on fire at Svensson Heights. Concerns for the future of renewable energy in Kilkeven. A daytime meteor streaks over Harvey Bay and two locals awarded with King's birthday honours. This is 7 News with Rob Bruff. Good evening. Thanks very much for joining us. First tonight, the dramatic moment a house burst into flames, allegedly at the hands of an arsonist. A man has been arrested over the early morning blaze, which took more than 30 firefighters to extinguish. A neighbour's camera picked up movement inside this Montgomery Street house around 5am. A man was seen casually strolling outside and gesturing toward the home before fleeing. Five minutes later, it was engulfed in flames. It's got woken up uh, with a smashing of glass. These exclusive pictures show neighbours scrambling as eight fire crews were tasked to the blaze. Oh, mate, the whole street was just packed. Detectives have since charged a 42-year-old Svensson Heights man with arson after Saturday's blaze. And the flames were above the trees. I mean, it was raging. It, and, and, then it, and then the fires were there and it's still things that went off. Neighbour Ralph Hayes says he's just happy no one was hurt and the fire didn't spread to other homes nearby. I'm not sure why, but it did explode about three times. We think it was the gas, though, in the air con. The accused man fronted the Bundaberg Magistrates Court today via video link, but his case was adjourned to tomorrow. Little was left of the house, the damage bill estimated in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. Jamie Tenikoff, 7 News. Battle lines have been drawn in Kilkeven over the Barumba Pumped Hydro project. The renewable energy hub is set to play a key role in reaching Labor's emissions target. But our local farmers say it's destroying their livelihoods, prompting a big call from the opposition. Pulling cash from a power promise. There will not be one federal dollar spent on this project. Now, if the state government... Locals were happy to hear the opposition would walk away from the $14 billion pumped hydro project at Barumba if elected in 2025. People's lives locally are being upended. From the pumped hydro energy storage system at Barumba to the 500 kV transmission lines that will connect it to these giant banks of solar farms and wind turbines that are intended all along the Kalula coast. The coalition also blamed radio silence from the state government. This is potentially the biggest capital expenditure in the state's history in terms of infrastructure and we're not allowed to know about it? I don't think they've got the checkbook to pay for this and Yungala. That'll be north of 30 billion dollars. These farmers are now eagerly waiting to see how the cards will fall in the state election on October 26. I find it absolutely abhorrent that we can be out here keeping the food security, the economy running of our state and that our government turns on us like this. In a statement, Energy Minister Mick Debrenny said the opposition doesn't care about the estimated 2,000 workers who would be brought on to the project. Because it is going to destroy generations to come. This won't be the lucky country anymore. We need money, we need these billboards up and we need the people in the city to know the penalty that we're paying for all this. Danny Sharp, 7 News. Harvey Bay residents are still buzzing after spotting a potential meteor at the weekend. Experts say there's a chance it's made it all the way to the ground and there could still be pieces undiscovered. Fishing at Tugum Creek is a regular Saturday morning activity for the Tibbetts family, but something was different this day. I looked up at the sky and I didn't even recognise it and I, all I saw was this thing at the corner of my eye and it just it was like a neon green, electric green thing. I saw this glow coming across the sky and you know, just realised, oh my god, it's a meteor. This dash cam in Harvey Bay caught the flash in the sky too, confirmed as a meteor by an equally excited expert. For this thing to be visible at all in daylight is really exciting to me because that means it was fairly big and fairly spectacular. It wasn't like your run-of-the-mill meteor. We're not sure if it's made it to the ground. There's about a 50-50 chance that we've actually got meteorites on the ground somewhere out in Queensland. Now researchers are putting the call out to the community for any other potential sightings. To get a meteorite fall with enough observations and enough dash cam footage that we can 
triangulate the path, figure out where it's going, that could be really exciting and really valuable. Savannah Burke, 7 News. The member for Burnett, Stephen Bennett, has released his wish list ahead of projects he'd like to see funded in tomorrow's state budget. So let's see real cost of living issues dealt with. Let's make sure that those issues that plague our region are addressed. He's calling for money towards the Paradise Dam rebuild, more support for local health staff and overtaking lanes for the ISIS highway. A Bundy Beverage King is one of two deserving locals recognised in this year's King's Birthday Honours List. Cliff Fleming says he was flabbergasted to discover that he'd won an award, while the family of late architect Gavin Patterson say he was richly deserving. He's the founder of one of Australia's most recognisable range of drinks. Underbird ginger beer. Old work attitude. But there's no attitude here. Cliff Fleming's receiving his King's birthday honour with humility. I've got a terrible lot of people to thank and I can never thank them enough for what we've achieved. The local legend and his family established Bundaberg Brew Drinks in 1960. Since then, the brand's exploded, achieving international success. And, and I too received an, uh, an email uh, two days ago from a mate who's in Borneo. In, he said, I'm in the centre of Borneo, in the, in the jungles of the world, and he took a photograph of our product in a refrigerator. <laughs> the late Gavin Patterson was also recognised for his service to the community of Harvey Bay. The multi-talented architect designed a number of buildings in the area, working on St John's Church, Xavier Catholic College and the Gattaca's Art Space. His widow, Tess Patterson, says he was an absolute character who was richly deserving of the award. She described him as very forthright and outspoken, but also had a degree of real humility. Jamie Tenikoff, 7 News. Coles is the first supermarket to introduce a limit on how many eggs you can buy as the nation grapples with a shortage. It's been prompted by an outbreak of bird flu, which saw thousands of chickens euthanised. And there are concerns of a possible price hike. Well, I'm afraid this is not a beat up. If eggs are a big part of your morning breakfast routine, you might want to think about purchasing some cereal. Coles has introduced a purchase limit on eggs in most of its stores, putting notices on shelves to restrict customers from purchasing more than two cartons at a time. The move, a result of a bird flu outbreak, leading to mass chicken culls across at least five chicken farms in Victoria. Farmers labelling it the worst outbreak in two decades with around 600,000 birds being destroyed. The cull is affecting the supply of around 450,000 eggs a day and there are fears it could be months, even years, before farmers will be able to rebuild. It's stressful for all farmers. It's a, a very big percentage and a lot of pressure we put on the other farms to meet that demand. This is a, a larger one than what we've ever had. Woolworths is yet to impose a limit on egg purchases. While poultry giant Ingham's Chicken has alerted supermarkets it will will be stepping up biosecurity measures. Customers across the country are now being urged to resist stockpiling. Take only what you need as the industry works to manage the undersupply. Gurry isn't just a popular tourist spot for campers and fishers, but a regular stop on the Humpback Highway. Claudia Nottle posted these spectacular drone videos to Fraser 4x4 Fishing and Camping of some early arrivals coasting along. Wild watching season typically runs from July to November, but the giant tourists are known to linger longer in the warmer waters of Harvey Bay. We'll take a break in a moment. The high-tech kangaroo collars preventing road collisions and the Fraser Coast senior who spent 65 years building model aircraft. turns to 7 News to keep up to date on local issues. And we want you to be part of it. If there's something happening in your street, your suburb, we want to know about it. Send us a message or drop us an email. Nice having you with us here on 7 News. Our university researchers are hoping to prevent collisions with wildlife by using high-tech collars tracking the movements of kangaroos. The study is also trying to learn more about why the mammals hop. 
and how they can help humans to conserve energy. Around 10 million animals are killed in crashes on Australian roads every year, most commonly kangaroos. But a new study by the University of the Sunshine Coast is hoping to reduce that road toll. Once we get a good idea of how these animals are moving and how their energy changes through the habitat, we can actually eventually make these speed energy landscape maps where we can be able to plot these animals and know where they are, what they're doing. High-tech collars have been used to track batongs, otherwise known as rat kangaroos. But some Sometimes they can prove to be unwilling subjects. So far, we have found that they're very hard to collar. The research will be expanded to different species of roos in an effort to figure out why they hop. And we suspect that's something to do with the Australian landscape. They actually become energetically neutral as they increase speed. Our iconic Australian mammal could also hold the key to helping humans conserve energy. If we can build an exoskeleton that reduces the cost of walking or moving in humans by taking inspiration from what we see in the locomotion of kangaroos, then we've gone a long way. Tiani Reid, 7 News. I'm sure we all know at least one. Now we're being urged to nominate the state's worst roads. RACQ has launched its biannual Unroadworthy Road Survey, encouraging motorists to dob in dodgy driving spots in the community. Not surprisingly, the Bruce Highway received the most nominations in the last survey. When people do respond to our survey and we put that information in front of the road authorities and politicians, we do see results. You can have your say in the survey on the RACQ website closing July 3. Many 90-year-olds would probably say eating healthy and drinking lots of water is the secret to feeling young. But Bruce McDonnell has a different approach. Bruce started making model aircraft 65 years ago and doesn't plan on slowing down anytime soon. Bruce McDonald spends more time in his garage than he does inside the house. Four or five hours in the morning, have lunch, then I come back out and start work again. At 90 years old, he says making model aircraft is his secret to feeling young. I'd almost say that I'd be the only 90-year-old still flying helicopters in Queensland. Bruce picked up the hobby in the late 60s and has put together hundreds of models since. I like playing with the helicopters. They're, they're my passion at the moment. Once the parts are delivered, it takes several weeks to build the tiny aircraft, but then it's time for the fun part. Then you've got to test fly them. That's the hardest part. First flight, getting them off the ground. He meets up with other members of Bundaberg Aero Modelers to fly them around the region. Like everything, what goes up must come down. I've crashed quite a few. And Bruce says he still has plenty more models to conquer. As long as I'm able. For a few years yet. Savannah Burke, 7 News. Yeah, get on to Bruce, remarkable mate. I'm heading off to get my little <laughs> model kit tomorrow. Good idea. And let's hope it's more than a few years. Doing a great job, Bruce. Oh, lovely. Now, the Bombers flying high in the AFL, Nath. Yeah, Bruffy Harvey Bay picked up another nice win over the Bulldogs on the weekend, where a young forward starred with seven goals. We'll have more on that next. And a big turnout for the Maryborough BMX Club's annual race day, including their new junior women's world champ. Stream 7 News anywhere, anytime, live and on demand on 7 Plus. And with 7news.com.au, you'll know the news now. And welcome back. Well, toddlers, veterans and even world champions jumped on their bikes to showcase their skills as the Maryborough BMX Club hosted its annual gala day. Riders from around the state converged on the Tanana track, including the Heritage City's Olympic hopeful. In perfect weather, over 300 BMX riders hit the Maryborough track for the club's annual gala day. And club president Scott Yarrow was pleased with the turnout. Uh, they vary from mini wheelers, so two, three year olds, up to 50 plus year olds. Um, we also have riders from Victoria come up for the event and as far north as uh, central Queensland. Elite riders including Jesse Asmus, Zach Hutton and Taya Rufus were part of the day competing in their regional event. It just shows you, you can come from any regional club and succeed on the world stage. 
Bundaberg Zach Hutton agreed, believing the competition was fierce on the track. Fairly challenged, there's a lot of good riders here today from south and north, so it's really good competition. All eyes, however, were on the local Mirabara rider and current junior female world champion Taya Rufus as she returned to her home track. She was taking it in her stride as she thinks about the year ahead. Next year I'll be taking a step into Elite, so hopefully can keep going upwards from there, but yeah, just take it one step at a time. Jesse Asmus took out the men's superclass, while Rufus continued her good run of form, winning the women's title. Brendan Bowers, 7 News. Bundy's Rebecca Griner was named the player of the match in the Hockey Roos win over Great Britain in Saturday's Pro League tournament match in London. The Aussies dominated across the pitch against the Brits and a Brooke Paris goal opened the scoring before Griner scored two of her own goals to secure the win for the Hockey Roos. We've um, been working really hard in the past few games, but I also think we took the learnings from our last uh, few matches in Belgium and really stuck it to GB today, which, yeah, just a performance that we're really proud of as a team. And the Hockey Roos followed up that win over Great Britain with a 4-3 penalty shootout victory against Germany yesterday. The Harvey Bay Bombers remain on target for the minor premiership in Wide Bay AFL after another convincing win against Brothers Bulldogs. And it was a young bomber who made the headlines. Shaden Meehan kicked seven majors in the 38-point victory. A dominant first quarter by the Brothers Bulldogs was not enough to stop the Bombers cruising to another win in the Wide Bay AFL. The final score of their Round 10 match was 88-50. to 50. Well, we wanted to come out, come out hot in the first quarter, but we, we didn't. We sort of started a bit slow and we sort of gradually gr uh, ground them down through the first and second and then hit our, hit our stride in a third and fourth. Comedies believe their fitness was the difference for the Bombers. Our skills, uh, skills under fatigue and just overall sticking to what we know will win. And there was no doubt who the player of the match was for Comedies. Oh, you can't go past Shea with seven goals, can you? Brothers Bulldog captain Tristan Taylor took positives out of the result. Pretty happy with our efforts across the board. Um, I thought we really stuck in there in, play, in, in stages, um, which shows the growth for us, which is all we're looking for at this stage of the season. Taylor was pleased with the first quarter performance, but still have room to improve. Well, we knew it was important to start well. Um, you can't give good sides a lead at the start and try and claw your way back because they'll kick away. Bay Power were too strong for the Waves Eagles in the other senior men's game. Brendan Bowers, 7 News. A big weekend for the AFL, capped mm. off by the big freeze of the MCG today, Bruffy, and that's it for sport. Thanks, oh, mate. mate. Thank you very much, Nath. String of beautiful weather ahead of us. We'll have a look at all the details with Liv coming up right after the break. Evening, Livio Regano with tonight's weather. This liberal serving of endless sunshine is a monumental shift away from the cloudy skies that pervaded through autumn. No rain expected for at least the next week. Of course, the price for clear winter skies is colder nights. Cloud acts like a blanket during the dark hours and without it, our minimum temps drop like a lead balloon. Just four degrees this morning in Gympie. To the satellite loop, we can see firstly there's no clouds to talk about. Even the frontal cloud left over uh, is so well and truly out to sea from the Cairns coast that it would take days to sail there with a boat. There's really nothing left to talk about. Even the upslope winds over the western downs have slackened off, so we're not getting that low cloud that we had anymore. Might see a little bit of fog, though, over coming days. Today's chart, you can see the high-pressure ridge is pretty much permanently lifted up to land latitudes. We've got a high now over northwest New South Wales, but over coming days there'll be a sequence of them moving west to east at roughly the same latitude, so it's always going to be an offshore breeze. Tomorrow's chart's much the same. Southwesterlies persisting, dry as a chip, clear skies statewide as long as this pattern remains. Now the latest from Bomb, the boating forecast for Harvey Bay Waters, southerly winds between 10 and 20 knots tomorrow, then it's a 10 to 15 knot westerly on Wednesday, and southerly is returning for Thursday. Gary offshore, 15 to 20 knots southerly, seas to 1.5 metres, uh, winds shifting westerly on Wednesday, and then south-southwesterly up to 25 knots for Thursday. Low tide first up tomorrow, then high tide around lunchtime, depending when you get hungry of course. New moon's well behind us now, so the swing of the tide's finally narrowing. 
And the wide bay burner, a sunny day after some inland frost. Bundaberg, 9 to 24 degrees. Gain to 24 as well. Harvey Bay, 23. Maryborough, again, 24. Looking ahead for Bundaberg, no rain in sight for the next seven days, and I doubt we'll even see much cloud. Clear skies will, of course, increase temperature range, so expect chilly nights and warm sunny days. First question of the season. On winter mornings, why does it keep getting colder even after sunrise? At night, the Earth's heat escapes quickly into space. And if there were no sun the next day, the ground would just cool down forever and ever. Even at daybreak, the temperatures still falling because most of the sun's energy is used up evaporating the frost and dew, leaving nothing in the tank to replenish the escaping heat. As the sun gets higher and stronger, the tug of war between incoming and outgoing heat eventually balances, the minimum temperature is reached and the ground starts warming up again. Hope that clears up that conundrum. Have a nice evening, folks. Now it's back to the team. Yeah, wonderful, Liv. Good on you, mate. Thank you very much. Thanks for your company, folks. If you missed anything, pick it up on our 7 Plus app or our page, 7news.com.au. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow night. Good night.